Hey everyone, and welcome to the 20th episode of my Launchpad tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to transition over to the new Launchpad Pro, and I'm going to show you all about the new features and how it works. When you get your Launchpad Pro, don't forget to update its firmware as soon as you get it. That way, you will get all the latest functionality. After the update is completed, your Launchpad will reboot. And then you want to set up the control surface, enable some lives preferences. There are a couple major differences between the Launchpad MK2 and the Launchpad Pro. The first obvious difference we see is that the Launchpad Pro has an additional row on the left side and an additional row on the bottom, which the MK2 does not have. And secondly, while the Launchpad MK2's buttons push in, the Launchpad Pro's buttons instead react to pressure instead of pushing inside. However, the most important difference is that the Launchpad Pro has new additional built-in features, while the Launchpad MK2 does not have any of those built-in features and can't function at all without an application controlling it. This is the new setup screen for the Launchpad Pro. On this screen, we can control how our Launchpad Pro behaves in various different situations. The Launchpad Pro brings in multiple different standalone modes, such as the Note mode, Drum mode, or Fader mode, but also keeps the classic Ableton functionality via the Live mode. First, let's go over the different parameters on the setup screen. The first parameter on the setup screen controls the velocity sensitivity. In order, low, mid, high, and off. The Launchpad's pressure-sensitive buttons don't just report an on or off state like the Launchpad MK2s do. They can report how hard you've pushed the button down instead. So, with this feature enabled, our sound will be quieter or louder depending on how hard we press the button. For covers, we generally turn this feature off. On the right side, we have the aftertouch settings, which reports how much the pressure changes over time while we are holding a button down. This is something that you also want to keep turned off for making covers. The two purple LEDs at the bottom control whether the pad should light itself up when we press the button or when we receive a note from the computer. So for example, if I turn these off and switch to note mode, if I press a button, nothing lights up. And if I turn these on, then my buttons give me visual feedback. The orange LED in the bottom right corner controls whether the launchpad should send notes to the standalone output port. That means the port located in the top corner of the launchpad. And it is meant to be used with standalone instruments. For making covers, we don't need this setting, so we're gonna keep it off. And additionally, at the bottom, we can select on which MIDI channel we want to communicate. Generally, for live mode, you want to keep this at channel 6, just like we did for the MK2. All of these settings are saved per each mode, so you can have different settings for different modes. I'm now going to go over all of the new individual modes that were added to the Launchpad Pro. To use the new standalone modes in Ableton Live, we just need to enable the second MIDI port for the Launchpad Pro. Now I can switch to Note Mode and start feeding my inputs. The new Note Mode gives us a chromatic layout, with C notes highlighted in purple, white notes highlighted in cyan, and black notes turned off, but still playable. The layout goes up every five notes and repeats on the right side. This is an ideal layout for playing instruments in Ableton Live. We can also adjust our Launchpad Pro to any scale by holding down Shift and then pressing the newly highlighted note, which brings us into the Note Mode Scale Setup screen. In this view, we can select any scale we like. There is a full list of scales that I will be linking down in the description. And then select any note that we want our scale to start with. After that, we just enable the scale view up here and select how large we would like our segment to be. The further we are to the left, the less repeats there will be. Let's set it somewhere around here and exit the editor. This is a minor F sharp scale. We can also change the octave of our current view and also transpose the scale as we wish. Next we have the drum mode, which is a mode optimized for playing drums on the launchpad. It features a drum-like layout similar to the one we've seen in user mode. Again, we can move the view up or down per square, or left and right per row. Next we have the fader mode, which lets us fade parameters within Ableton Live. There are 8 faders in total, each using up its own column. 
In Ableton, if we enter the MIDI mapping mode, and then map any of these faders to a knob, we can then directly control that knob just by tapping on the launch pad. If we enable velocity sensitivity for this mode, then we can smoothly glide the parameter to any desired value with a light tap or a hard press. The final new mode is called the programmer mode. It is essentially a blank slate designed for programmers to develop their own apps for use with the Launchpad Pro. One example of an app that would use programmer mode would be FL Studio or any other DAW. And finally, I'm going to go over the changes that were made to the live mode. The first thing we can notice is that the mixer mode is entirely missing in the Launchpad Pro. Its functionality is still retained in the bottom row of buttons. If I, for example, press the volume button, I get a mixer of volume faders that I can use to change the volume of any track. Similarly, I can change the pan, mute, arm, etc. A cool thing about this is that now I don't have to switch all the way over to mixer mode just to change a parameter. In the session mode, I can just hold, for example, the volume button, make my change, and then release to go back to the mode I was at before. In addition to that, the left-hand side of buttons allows us to directly apply a number of operations to our session mode clips. Now I'll turn the metronome on by using the click button, and I'm going to record to this clip slot right here. When I'm done, I'm going to hit the record button, and that's going to stop the recording. And now I can stop this clip by clicking stop clip and then selecting the track I want to stop. If I make a mistake at any time, I can just hit the undo button and that's going to undo my changes. If I hold shift and click undo, then that's going to redo my changes. I can hold down delete and then tap a clip that I want to get rid of. Similarly, I can hold quantize to quantize a clip that I want quantized. I can duplicate that clip in order to get different versions of it that I can change later in the software. And finally, I can hold the double button in order to double the contents of the clip that I'm pressing. If at any point I want to record more notes into my clip, I can just hit record. And then I can quantize that all over again. All of that is now possible to do without touching the software at all. So this is entirely done hands-on in the session view. The user 2 mode of the Launchpad MQ2 was replaced with the note and device mode in the Launchpad Pro. Depending on what kind of instrument is loaded in your track, the note mode will switch between a drum view and a note view, similar to the two standalone views. Right now, I have a drum rack loaded, so I'm seeing the drum view. However, if I instead choose to arm an instrument, I get the note view that we've seen earlier in standalone. And similarly to the standalone mode, I can go over into the scale setup screen and define my own scale. The device mode is a new mode that strongly resembles the fader mode. We can use the left and right arrows to move around our chain and control different devices. The device that we're currently controlling is indicated with a purple hand next to its name. Each of these faders represents one of the eight macros on the device that we're currently trying to control. And we can fade them similarly to the standalone fader. And finally, the user mode, which actually hasn't seen many changes when compared to the Launchpad MK2. We can still set up our track the same way as we did before, and we get our light feedbacks by using channel 6. To get access to the Top Pro, we can't pitch up from the right side anymore, because these are now mapped to the left and bottom of our Launchpad. And pitching up from the bottom doesn't help either, because there's actually no more notes left after this one in the MIDI standard. Instead what we do, is we pitch down from the start. That's gonna be it for this tutorial, if you have any questions about this, please ask them in the comments, and I'll answer right away. Thank you for watching, bye!